intertwined in the C-section st scar. And I didn't realize it, and I waited a couple days. I felt uncomfortable, but I didn't really feel like pain or really anything unusual for a while. Not like I was actually touching down there. It's an area that's, you know, not really messed with much. But with how bad I've been feeling and how much crap I've been feeling like because of the, you know, mold problem... I ignored the fact that I had a little bit of discomfort on that area. I figured every once in a while my scar feels weird. That's probably all it was. Then I went and put my hand down there and I went like this onto that section. And like, I was half asleep when I did that. And all I felt in my hand was like oozy goozy and a hard, hard like not feel underneath the line like the length of the scar for like that much of the scar and like it was like that big around the scar when I looked down there to see what was going on it was red like that much around it and then the scar felt like there was hard balls underneath of it so I've been yesterday I started taking an antibiotic that the doctor told me to hold on to in case I need it because the time she prescribed it, you know, they have to prescribe a certain amount when they prescribe certain meds. And she only had wanted me to take it for a week because that should have cleared up the infection I had at the time, which was in certain psoriasis areas on my legs. They weren't too bad, so it should have cleared up within a week with the medicine, which it did. And so, and I had one on my face that was like right here that was really bad, so it cleared both those up. And she said, just take it for a week because if you, because if I take that for two weeks, like it's prescribed, then I get the horrifying yeast infections. So she wanted me to just take it for a week and then check back in. So I did. And she said, just hold on to the rest of it in case I need it again. As long as it's used within a year, she said it should be fine. So I debated for a little while and then I talked to my friend who's also a nurse. And we discussed it, and I talked to somebody else who's in the medical professional career because every time I call my doctor's office, I can't seem to actually get a hold of my actual doctor. So, and I haven't been able to walk down there, so I'm just like, not a big deal. They're saying it's, a, it's probably a good idea. It can't really hurt too much, so that's what I'm doing. I'm taking those. I'm keeping the area clean. I am i don't want it to scab over too much because I want it to be able to drain out. Plus, I don't want my underwear to rip it open again. Don't ask. When I first realized that I let it drain, I squeezed what I could out. I plucked the hairs that were in that certain section out so that they weren't wouldn't redo it. And now there's a couple more in there that I gotta try to out. And there's like four or five like kind of big open spots on it right now they're kind of big in my opinion on for that area like I haven't but they are draining they are draining and that is what's what's good and I got to get more of those other band-aid things so that I can continue helping it suck its way out and where it's positioned if I keep like go like when I go like that it like pushes more stuff out without having to actually squeeze it which doesn't hurt too bad so that's why I've been like you know, leaning forward a little bit because the way my stomach and my squishes together, it kind of stuff out. So I literally have a tissue in my underwear on that spot, like just soaking up anything that looks out. So, yeah. And then I soaked an Epsom salt the other day. So I'll get it taken care of. I just hate that it does this. I don't need suggestions. I don't need that. I have it taken care of. It just sucks. So stop with your suggestions because that stuff is not really going to help. For one, I can't read that H word. Cannot read it. For two, I have tried other ways over the course of 30 years of my life, 31 years of my life. I have tried many things for many kinds of infections. I am doing what is best for my body and what my body is telling me to do. 
and what my friends that are medical professionals are telling me to do. So I am doing what is best for my body. What my body knows to do. Oh my God. It's a scar that's been there for over six years. It's completely healed. The only reason the C-section scar has any problem right now is because there was some ingrown hairs that got stuck in the scar. That is the only reason there's a problem. The scar is not ripping open. It's just a hairy situation. The scar is intact. It is not ripping open. It just has some pussiness inside of it, which is oozing out of the other parts of it above and under it. It's not even on the direct scar where it's looking out. So stop trying to tell me what to do with my body. I got this and if it doesn't get better within a couple more days or start getting better, which is already getting better. I can already tell it's getting better. It feels a little less painful. It's starting to heal up. The size of the roundness is going down. The feel of the hardness inside of it is going down. I got this. I do not need everybody else's damn opinions and what to do for my body unless you are a licensed dermatologist and you want to come to me and fix the problem and I don't want anything to do with it. Do not need anybody's advice unless you are a medical professional that I asked for your advice. I never asked once for anybody's advice on the problem. I am only letting people know because they asked me why I was hurting. They asked if it was just my knee. It's not just my knee today. It's my knee, my ankle, my foot, my back. My arm is killing me for some reason again where I broke it. So that's fun. Which does tend to happen when weather direct drastically changes. I don't know if I said that word correctly, but you know what I mean? When like weather goes from one temperature and heat index and moisture index to another real quick, then my body says, fuck this shit. So yeah, I am a-okay. I got this. It's okay. Cool, cool, cool beanos. I farted. Now back to the show. Ooh, that fart stinky. And I've had problems where the infection in my body has been so bad that you can literally smell the infection. You know how I know that? Even if I can't smell it, I have a sister that her nose smells it. Or I'll be wondering what the fuck the smell is, and she taught me what that smell is. It's infection. Because there was one out when we were kids, I'd be like, I smell something weird. Couldn't figure out where the fuck it was coming from. It'd be a cut in my leg or something. She'd be like, um, that's coming from that. That is a smell of infection. I'm like, oh, okay. That makes sense. And she'd literally like, if it was open, she would like dab a tissue or something on it and be like, here. Smell it up closer so you know. And it's like, oh, yep. Mm -hmm. That is definitely where it is coming from. Definitely the situation. Oh, I know. I have problems with poo-poo, too. And I've had to learn how to uh, do things and watch my BMs and everything. And I have to watch Dean, and not so much, but Sam, I have to watch his BMs. I literally will write down when he has a BM and when he does not. I have a calendar. I print out calendars and then I write when he has a BM, what day he has a BM on. That way I have documentation and proof of when he has poo pooed and when he has not poo pooed. And if, and not saying you have to, but if you have poo poo problems or your kids have poo poo problems, it is not a bad idea to uh, do that. 
And you can also make it a little less obvious by doing this thing where you use stickers instead of just writing the letters BM. You can have color code. You could have a sticker that's brown for days that you've shit or red or blue or green or whatever color you want. Then you can have a different color for days that you didn't poo. Or you can just leave those blank. Or you can have ones that mean, well, it took a poo, but it was kind of small poo. Then you can have a color for, it was a big ass doozy. It plugged the potty. Not even kidding you, I had to do that multiple times for myself because my system got so off track that I had to remind myself when I took a poo and when I did not take a poo. And I literally had one hanging up in my damn bathroom and people were like, why do you have a, a potty chart in your bathroom? And it's like, that's for me. And that's before I even had my kids. I had a poo-poo chart in my bathroom to track my poo-poo. I am not normal. And I do the same thing for my child. That way I know when he has gone, when he has not gone. And then me, my mom, my grandma, anybody that has him either gets the chart or they let me know how many times he's gone and I do the chart. That way everybody wins. Everybody knows everything and we're good. Staying hydrated is totally key. Really? Really? Everybody wants to get on that. Yes, staying hydrated is, is a good thing. But y'all go over crazy with this hydration shit too. You literally all want to say that water fixes everything. Yeah, it does. It supposedly fixes acne. That does not work for everybody. Supposedly, it fixes your poo-poo. Not really always true. Supposedly, it fixes your weight. Not true! Supposedly, it makes everything better. Did you know that if you drink too much water, it can kill you? You can drown yourself from the inside out by drinking too much water. Did you know that you can drown in water as well? And you can drown others in water. Not saying to do it. I'm just saying water does not always fix the problem unless you're trying to get rid of a problem by drowning the problem. Only do that to pedos if you do, please. Or in self-defense so that you don't get in trouble. Yeah, dry drowning. You drink too much water and you can die. And another thing, another factor that people don't think of. Did you know that some people are actually allergic to water? Yeah, it's a thing. There is actually people who are allergic to water. They cannot properly shower without it hurting them. They cannot go out in the rain without it hurting them. They can't drink water without it hurting them. They have to shower in certain ways and only spend so much time in a shower. That's it. Another non-believer. Ding dong, ding dong. Another non-believer. Hold up, hold up. Let's go to the internet. Let's go to the internet. Can you be allergic to water? You, someone, can someone be allergic to water? It may seem like a strange question, but the answer is yes. There is a very rare condition known as, okay, I can't read that. I think that says aquagenic. I know I'm fucking reading that wrong. 
it's got to be wrong. Aqua, 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 something. It looks like aqua, aquagenic. I'm trying to sound it out. Does that? The other word I definitely can't read, but there. There's your evidence. There's your fucking evidence. Here is your evidence, Karen. You don't want to believe me. It is possible to be allergic to water. Here are some people who are allergic to water, what their skin does. There's some people that are actually allergic to their own sweat. Which is another one that people don't believe. A lot of people don't believe that I'm allergic to cigarette smoke. But have you ever realized how much shit is in a goddamn cigarette? I don't even know if it's a cigarette in general that I'm allergic to. Or every single or some of the chemicals that are in it. But you can literally legit be allergic to water. Fucking water. So before you sit there and tell me that you cannot be allergic to something, go shove it in your butt. Because you can. There's people literally allergic to fucking water. Yeah, there's some people who literally have to live in pretty much a bubble. A bubble. Specialized capsule looking bubble thing. I don't know. They went silent as fuck. If you want to gross your grandma out, take a can of aerosol Lysol, spray anything in her house. That won't get ruined by saturation. Spray the wall and watch it drip. Have a rag ready and a puke bucket. <laughs> Cigarette smoke. Yeah, which is fucked up. The funny part is when you type in something like that, it says no. But yet, there's people who literally are allergic to it. I have been, I, I have been told, even by a dermatologist, that I'm allergic to it. But on the internet, it tries to tell you no. But, you know, the internet's not always perfectly correct. But yet it says no on top, but when you t put something, people also asked, how do you know you're allergic to cigarette smoke? It basically tells you how to know. What the fuck is up with that? What the fuck is that shit? So it says no, but then it tells you how... Make it make sense. Make it make sense. Can you be allergic to secondhand smoke? That one is a yes. Okay, so you can't be allergic to cigarettes in general, but you can be allergic to the secondhand smoke? The fuck is that? What the fuck is that? 
Okay, so does that mean I can just go smoke a fucking cigarette and be fine? Because that makes no sense. That literally makes no sense. No, I am not about to try that either. No, I'm good. Oh, wow. I did not know this one. Can, can you get sick from being around cigarette smoke is another commonly asked question. It says, exposure to secondhand smoke causes multiple health problems in inf infants and young children, including ear infections, respiratory system, which the respiratory I already knew, um, res acute lower respiratory infections, and bronchitis and pneumonia. And the only reason I can read bronchitis, pneumonia, and infection, and respiratory is because I've literally seen those words so many damn times that I don't have to technically read it to know what the word is. As weird as that sounds, like I don't know if people understand what I mean by that. Like there's certain letters when I see them together, I can pretty much guess the word. Which has fucked me up sometimes, but that is weird. What the? Oh God! What the? Oh God! Wow! It was fast on how fast he got out of there too. Look, I know it. We told him he had to get out by a certain time, but damn, I didn't expect him to actually be able to find a place that fast that wasn't a motel. But I wanted him out of there. Like, I'm sorry, but no, you don't fucking lie about shit like that. Not just them, I'm protective over your ass too, even though I know you can protect yourself, bitch. Plus, I'm protecting you from murder because if you murder him, then you go to jail and then your kids don't have you. That's not fun either. And right now, not saying that she, they don't need you in general, but right now, Nevaeh kind of needs a female figure to stick around because, you know, things. Uh huh. Oh, lovely. You should bust his stupid little balls and ask him if he realizes where his underwear is. Not really, because I know quite a few people that don't wear them, and they're not like that. Actually, no. I know quite a few predators that wear them purposely. Well, my stepfather used to be the only thing that he wore. Literally, he'd walk around in tidy whities Shit stained tidy whities Yeah. And that's all he would wear. Well, home. Yeah, I know. I get it. I'm also on a live right now, so... 
Oh, that hurt my ear. Okay. Good. Did his grandmother get a hold of you yet? No, she doesn't have my personal number. I didn't know if she'd try to get a hold of you somehow. No, I always only talk to her. Oh, okay. I'm trying to get some laundry folded and be on live for a little while. Then I'm going to go get the boys. And then I got to figure out where the fuck I put my wrapping shit because I got to wrap the thing for the baby. I will. Yeah. Oh my God. He's not the worst person in the world and he's grown up quite a bit over the past couple of years. Alrighty. Okay. Is he gonna have Tim drop it off to him, or is he got? If he is he coming back to get the stuff? No, Tim's dropping off to him. Not All right. Him. Remember, if you want, have him switch the car seats out while he's running back and forth, so that way he's got more room in the car, and then she can have that in the car for next time she needs it. Then you can use her car seat for a backup for Aiden <laughs> until he grows out of it. <laughs> Yeah, he'd probably be good with a, the kind like Sam and Dean have, but, you know. Yeah, that's what I got for the boys, but the backs do come off when they get big enough for them. Big enough for that, so. Oh. So. those if you want me to they're not very expensive but yeah. okay mm -hmm. link of the